a few other common causes of uveitis and let us study some clinical cases in order to discuss on these etiologies. Patient presenting with a 10-year history of recurrent bilateral granulomatous uveitis with waxing and waning exudative retinal detachments. Patient is on steroids and immunosuppressives. So the disease is chronic. Patient has bilateral disease. It's recurrent and uveitis is granulomatous in nature and very specifically has exudative retinal detachments. Clinical picture shows Kepe and Busaka nodules in the iris indicating granulomatous nature and activity of the uveitis. Extensive pigment alterations in the fundus indicating chorioretinal inflammation which has subsided and the chronic nature of the disease. Dalin fuchs like peripheral nodules which are yellow white nodules now appear pigmented because of the chronic nature of the disease. Subretinal fibrosis which is seen in the macular area. So the diagnosis here is Wok Koyonagi Harada disease. It is a bilateral condition with granulomatous iridocyclitis with variable amount of vitritis but exudative retinal detachments are the hallmark of the disease. It is more commonly seen in pigmented races. Aids in the diagnosis include the extraocular features that are associated with this disease. One involving the CNS. It shows CSF pleocytosis, neck stiffness, seizures, paralysis early in the course of the disease. Skin changes which are seen slightly later, vitiligo, alopecia and poliosis. Patient may complain of hearing loss and tinnitus. The diagnosis of the disease is by the classical clinical picture of exudative retinal detachments but what is important to rule out sympathetic ophthalmitis because both the diseases present similarly, clinical features are similar, even the sympathetic ophthalmitis can have extraocular features. CSF lymphocytosis early in the disease could also aid in the diagnosis. Management of VKH disease involves vigorous use of steroids. Again, by all possible routes including local, periocular and systemic. The disease goes through four phases, initially prodromal, then uveitic, chronic and recurrent. It is important to stop the disease before it reaches the recurrent phase because it is a recurrent disease that can ultimately cause severe visual loss and even thysis. Because of this, patient may also be needed to be started on immunosuppressives. In general, immunosuppressives and corticosteroids are the mainstay of therapy of VKH disease. A 50-year-old diabetic patient comes with blurry vision and has no diabetic retinopathy changes. Instead, his fundus shows peripapillary atrophic changes. Areas of retinal pigment epithelial atrophy with underlying large choroidal vessels visible. Pigments in a bony spicule pattern adjacent to the vessels. This is not a presentation of panuveitis but a presentation of pigmentary retinopathies. So the patient is worked up for pigmentary retinopathies. The differential diagnosis includes hereditary conditions like retinitis pigmentosa or could be sequelae of some autoimmune disease. Toxic etiologies could be chloroquine use or thyroidazine but it could also be sequelae of infectious diseases like tuberculosis, syphilis and Lyme disease. Patient is worked up for all these diseases, investigations are done and he has a positive RPR and an FTA ABS and the diagnosis is syphilis. Syphilis is a great masquerader in medicine. Similarly in the eye, syphilis can present as any type of uveitis. It should therefore be considered in every case of uveitis, especially because it can be cured. Syphilis can be seen in the eye either as congenital syphilis keratouveitis or in acquired syphilis. Secondary syphilis is the most common stage for uveitis in the eye. The uveitis can be seen as just iridocyclitis or intermediate uveitis or posterior uveitis or panuveitis.
when it uh, presents as iridocyclitis, the inflammation is granulomatous. Iris can have some classical presentations like iris roseola. These are dilated vessels of the iris or iris papulosa, papules which are vascularized on the iris. Larger than the papules could be nodules which are also vascularized yellow and red in color iris nodosa or gamata. Choroiditis can be focal or multifocal. Retinitis could be presenting as areas of necrosis or perivasculitis. Papillitis and neuroretinitis are the other presentations of syphilis. Management of this condition involves first diagnosis and then therapy. For diagnosis, at least two tests will have to be done. VDRL or RPR and FTA-ABS or TPHA. Once the diagnosis is confirmed, ocular involvement should be treated as neurosyphilis because breakdown of the blood ocular barrier is analogous to breakdown of the blood brain barrier. CSF evaluation should be done in any syphilitic uveitis and the treatment is same as for neurosyphilis which involves penicillin G 2 to 5 million units intravenous administration fourth hourly for a period of at least two weeks. As the sequelae of inflammation can be quite severe and can cause loss of vision in the eye, steroids may be needed but they should be given only after starting of effective antibiotic therapy. This is the case for every infectious cause of uveitis. Anti-infective agent has to be administered and once their effectivity is confirmed, steroids should be started to decrease the sequelae of inflammation in the eye. This is a 35-year-old male patient, complains of 